and greetings, fellow Machina users. This is Fontaine, www.vipsoundlab.com, and I'm back on Machine 2.6.5 with Logic Pro 10. This is more or less a tutorial in a combination with getting some questions answered from some of the members. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here I am inside of Logic, and I'm going to increase the uh, size here to get a better view of what I'm doing. And I'm going to open this up a little bit here. And I'm going to rewind this a little bit. OK, the members question basically consists of the last template that I made when it comes to the MIDI notes. Um, I set it up in a way so that that way you can record harmonies in it. And it's also a good starting point. So they didn't get the full grasp of how to actually use the machine hardware controller to actually control the MIDI and record the notes in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up and in case someone else is also a little fuzzy on that. We'll get that clear as well. All right. So the first thing you need to do is go under your machine to we'll open this guy up and this is on a multi channel output. You know, there's a stereo output and there's a multi channel output. Make sure that you're using the multi uh, channel output. You can click this icon here if you need to get a better view of this. And there's a view icon here if you wanted to open it up a little bit more in case that's a little squished and crowded. OK, here's your channel properties uh, icon here. I'll close this browser to make it even more easier to see. All right, so here is your channel properties icon. As you can see right here, you have three different sound levels, master group and sound, under sound, under input. You don't want to be on this one. This is more or less for getting your channel set up. We have the work already done for that anyway. This one here, group, the one in the middle, is the one you want to be on where it says MIDI. OK, th that means that you're going to be able to control all the MIDI notes on this whole entire group, all these sounds. Don't worry about the channels. Don't worry about the root. Well, the root note, I'll get to this in a minute, but you don't have to worry about none of this. The only thing you have to do is click active. And that active uh, button should be on that uh, template that we have. If it's not for some reason, select active. Because I believe that it should be on active. Okay. All right. So then from that point, We'll just close this down. OK, and on your machine controller, what you want to do is you want to press shift and control. All right, once you press shift and control on your hardware controller, I'm going through the sounds. Like so. Notice here how the MIDI uh, inputs are coming in. C1, C sharp one, and so on. D1, all the way up to, I think it's D sharp two. Yeah, D sharp two. All right. If you don't have your screen in Logic, you can right click here. Go to Customize Control Bar and Display. Okay, where it gets important is up under LCD. Okay, mine is set to custom. I believe it's going to default to beats and projects, if I'm not mistaken. Scroll down to custom. Select that. All right. Once you select custom, I want you to go down to MIDI activity in and out. This is when it's gone. This is when it's there. You got to look right here. Off and on. Boom. Also added a uh, little rewind button here that just basically takes it to the beginning of the track. You can save this as a default. That's completely up to you, as I've done here, because this is just a preference that I just have. All right, so you click OK. And then from that point, what you can do is you can press um, Record in Logic and get your MIDI notes recorded. Just kind of add some notes in. And it's like really bug out. You know, just get like really crazy and just make like some really notes in there. So I'm not trying to make a beat. All right. And as you can see right there, the MIDI notes recorded in. You have the recording icon here. These are what's called uh, auxiliary tracks, auxes, whatever you want to call them, basically to monitor your sounds. The levels, you can control these levels here. And nine times out of ten, this is generally what I do because when it comes to using these these auxiliary tracks here, you know. I use it to control the levels. You notice 
what I'm doing here corresponds to the left as well as on the top screen up there. Okay, so when you want to get a good, uh, nice mix and balancing everything out, because the way that I have the template set is on a fixed velocity, because I don't want to tap on the pads too hard. All right, so to understand that better, we're going to take a look at the controller editor template. But before I do that, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to separate by note pitch. And as, as you can see right there, all the MIDI notes get separated. This first instance, you actually uh, can delete it. Oop. I didn't mean to do all of it at the same time. You can just delete this one here. You don't need that one. As you can see right here, it will still play the same. Everything is still tracked out. As you can see there. All right, so I'm going to go down to the desktop for a second because I need to show you this. It's very important. As you can see right here, I have some prefabricated templates. This one's for the MK1, this one's for the MK2. And this one's for the studio. So if you're a member of the site of www.vipsoundlab.com, be sure to go into the member section and download these templates. As you can see right here, VIP Logic Pro X MK1. This is the MK1. As you can see right here from C1 all the way to D2. Tapping on the pads. I'm getting a nice volume. On each pad. In the controller editor template allows me to do that as you can see right here under group c this is basically where you want to start you don't want to be on a b d because basically you're going through the zone range doing that you want to start on your zone range zone range from c1 i labeled it like this to make it very easy to see visually and you'll understand it very easily it should make learning this template like that because it's just that simple you press c because c1 is here Okay, that's where the template's going to start. In other words, your first pad, your first sound, or all, all the way up to your 16th sound here. All right, so under uh, the assignments here, zone range from C1, channel 1, again, note C1. All these uh, pads here are going to correspond with this little box here. It all works the same. Okay. So you don't have to change anything. You don't have to alter anything in here. You don't have to go and press any. All the work is already done. Okay. The minimum velocity, I have it to 127. Again, why? It's a fixed velocity. In other words, you ever be a machine and you press pad mode, and then from pad mode, you press fixed velocity. This is basically what it, what it does when you have the ability to turn that knob. So let's say if it was at, let's say I put 50, which is lower. The 127 now you're getting about half well just well just a little a little under half of the full velocity so when i tap the pad you're going from 50 on up in other words the minimum amount you can make is 50. now if i put it to zero like this here and then i tap on the pad you might not even hear that you got to really really smash it you got to really smash them pads to get a good velocity and that's something I don't feel like doing when it comes to the control editor template. So I, I leave it at a fixed velocity like this. It just makes life really easy to just go in there. And just makes it easier that way. So that's why I have it set. Okay, for the MK1. And we have one for the MK2. We just give that a sec to load up. Same thing. Now with MK2, you have the ability to, you know, assign your colors. So that makes it uh, a little more visually stimulating because you can, you know, locate kicks, hi hat snares, and all that good stuff uh, a lot quicker. And of course, we have the flagship MPC Studio. I just give that a little second to load up. And again, all these templates have the host transport controls. You know, if you want to map that. And again, same thing. You can come over here under your assignments, you know, and get things set up as far as your velocities and all that good stuff, colors, you know, and all that good stuff there. So it's it's all preference. 
you know, it's up to you. Just make sure that on each template that you're starting on C from C1 all the way up to D sharp two. And as long as you remember that, yeah, you should be good to go, man. Um, same thing, you know, sign pad colors and if you want to put all your kicks in one color and snares and all that good stuff. You got that ability there. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty much straightforward. It's very easy. Um, I hope that this video will make it a lot more easier to understand because, you you know, you can do audio uh, tracks as well. Like if the very first video that I did, you might want to take a look at that because what I did do was I had the auxiliary tracks as well as the audio tracks. So technically you could record MIDI and audio at the same time, but I wouldn't even do it like that. That's why I made uh, these separate templates to give you give you the ability to say, okay, um, I might want to work in the MIDI environment first. You know, you might want to come in here. As I was mentioning earlier in the video, for example, here is a note. So let's say under the pointer tool, this note here, I selected. You notice how every time you touch a note, it sounds off. Music, by the way, can't control your heartbeat. I don't, I don't know if anyone knows that, but music can actually control your pulse. <laughs> But um, you have the velocity icon here. So if it's red, that means it's, it's, it's you know, full velocity. You know, you might want to bring it down to give your, you know, your session a more humanized feel. Okay, because with the controller editor template, that's just a little bit harder to do um, when it's at a fixed velocity. Again, I don't want to smash the pads like that. I mean, if you don't have a problem doing that, maybe if you want to set it, maybe... 50 65 percent and on up you know if you feel that was something that would be comfortable for you then go ahead and do it that way i'm more of a technical person i like to really get in here and automate everything you know i like to automate everything i like to to be in here you know you can set your quantization you have you know scales all that all that good stuff in here you know you want to get in here with, with your your pencil tool assign automation lanes and all that good stuff you know you have the ability to do that so note velocity, pitch bend, all, all that good stuff. You'll, you'll find all these controls in here. But I'm not going to really get into that because, you know, this would be more of a logic uh, tutorial. You know, but you can control the velocity this way. Full level to give it more of, you know, of a harmony uh, pencil tool. an idea red is like full velocity I'm not gonna really be that too much but you know something like this is what you would be doing in your workflow and it doesn't take long you know if these were all kick patterns you know how long did that take like what a minute not even and it gives you a more human feeling it's played you know, boom, 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 you know, or, and plus we have it, you know, set on the scales, you know, so it makes it a lot easier that way too. With this one, it's more, okay, there, wait, where is it? Here's this guy right here. I'm trying to get that one, it doesn't matter. You get the idea. When I tap on these, it's triggering those, those, those MIDI notes over there. See, in the other template, we had it so you can go up and down, uh, the zone range and pitch your notes for harmony. So it, it depends on your workflow because it's going to be a debate because some people are going to say, okay, well, you have the MIDI notes, but a problem might be if you're a machine, let's say if you're a machine and you drag and drop your notes like this, you know, some people might say, hey, I want to drag and drop my notes. You can, but certain harmonies might not work. You know, it, it, it might, um, you just have to test it out for yourself and see, you know, you might have a bass scale that could be like boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? Something like that. But when you get over in here, it might not do that. It might be just on one key. You know, in other words, if it looked like this in machine and then in here, it, it would be like this. Everything would be like on one key like this. It'll, it'll, like when you drag and drop it, it'll look like this. run too long but these you know and then these two notes right here would be the same thing it would be 
and then you just got one continuous boom, 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 you know, bass pattern. It's going to drive you crazy. And now you have to go back and reset it. So that's why with the other MIDI template, I did it a different way. But, you know, again, it, it depends on however you want to do it. I mean, we have three different ones, one for audio, one for MIDI, and one for harmony. So it's up to you. So if the one you have after watching this video, you feel, okay, well, that's the one that you do want to work with, then by all means keep that. But if not, then this would be the one I feel would be perfect for you. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's Fontaine, www.vipsoundlab.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a thumbs up in the video section below and stay tuned for more Machine 2.6 um, tutorials. I'm looking forward to the audio tracks in the new update that's coming out uh, relatively soon. I know they want to get that done before the time stretching in the real time pitch from what I hear. Um, I don't know. I think if they do drop the audio tracks, maybe they should add a nice warping algorithm to that warping or something along those lines, because I think if we just have regular old audio tracks, that might be just a little bit boring <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I get to the point where I'm like, what would even be the point? Machine's not even a full DAW, but it, 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 it's a step in the right direction. But um, without some type of warping or anything like that, I mean, I really, I wouldn't understand the significance of it. If it's an audio track and then I can do the same thing with the MIDI track and bounce it as an audio stem anyway, what would be the point? All right, so that's pretty much it. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.